Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. We are told, and so many of us believe that the child is the father of the man. Does this mean that the die has already been cast, even before the game has really begun? And since life itself is a game, and therefore subject to rules, what makes a child break them or follow them in the first place? Well, if you will allow me to paraphrase the great Sam Johnson, I have found you a question. I am not obliged to supply you with an answer. Only an insight. You love me, Claire. I don't. You always loved me. Please. I want to go home. Go right ahead. But I won't ask you again. Mike. I don't want a cheap, quick affair. Please, Mike. I want a marriage. I'm already married. We agreed that was a mistake. But I am married. You have to pay for it the rest of your life. I... I don't believe in divorce. It's the only way. I was brought up not to believe. It's against my convictions. Can't we find another way? Yeah, we can. How about murder? Our mystery drama, A Challenge for the Dead was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Breakfast is always a very special meal for Claire Gordon. At least it has been during the 20 years she's been married. Claire and Johnny don't talk about it, but there is one basic fact that is always present. This can be their last breakfast together. Johnny is a cop, and like a lightning bolt in a clear blue sky, trouble can explode at any time, anywhere, without the slightest warning. And so Claire and Johnny deal with it by seemingly not dealing with it at all. Hey, that's a pretty big breakfast. Well, get to work on it while it's hot. How do you expect me to lose weight? You don't gain weight on what you eat here. Go easy on those lunches at Pops. Oh, where's the paper? Uh, the paper? The newspaper, the publication, the gazette, the press. Oh, oh, the paper. That's a smart girl. I don't think we got it this morning. We didn't. Really, Johnny, it didn't come. Look, you're dealing with a detective here. Look at your fingers. You got that black stuff, that newsprint on it. And if I check out the garbage can, what'll I find? Okay, copper, you got me. And aren't you supposed to separate the garbage? Papers, cans, bottles, so forth. Not only are you a bad liar, you're a terrible ecologist. I didn't want to ruin your breakfast. There must have been a big headline about Mike Perry. Did the grand jury dismiss the indictment? Insufficient evidence. Insufficient evidence. Bribe witnesses. That's the right name for it. Look, this is what I didn't want you to get into the first thing in the morning. What the grand jury has said to him in effect is, go ahead, you've got our blessing. Turn the whole city into a sewer. That is not what they said. Mike Perry is a cancer that eats away at the guts of the city. You name it, he runs it. Drugs, gambling, girls, loan sharks. Legally, he doesn't, because legally it can't be proved. Legally. 
Don't you or anybody else give me the law. What else is there, Johnny? If you don't believe in the law, what are you doing on the police force? Show me one other cop on the force who fights for the law harder than I do. Uh, it's a pity I won't be here a couple hundred years from now, because by that time, I'm sure they'll have made you a saint. Legally. Legally, he didn't kill Father Jim either, I suppose. He probably did. Oh. Now it's become probably. Johnny, that was 20 years ago. Does the passage of time alter the facts? Every time I have a spare hour, a free day, I try to go over it. Johnny. This time, when all the heat was on Mike Perry, what do you think I was doing? I let the other guys spin their wheels. I try to get him for Father Jim's murder, because that's the only one he ever did with his own hands. You want more coffee? Always more coffee. Look, I realize you haven't had much fun all these years. Well, that makes us even. I don't think you've had much fun either. If only you would just relax a little more. I promise. From now on, I will. What are you going to do today while I'm out there fighting that lonely battle against crime? I mean, that's what I mean, as if you're the only cop on the force who's sincerely concerned. Well, sometimes it feels that way. Well, let's, let's drop it. Well, what are you going to do today? <sighs> I'm afraid to tell you. Take a chance. I'm having lunch with Laura Billingham. Lovely Laura. Tactful Tommy's beautiful wife. Johnny. I think I'll resign. What kind of police force is it that can have a Tommy Billingham as a chief inspector? You could have been chief inspector. You both joined the department the same day. That's right. I studied how to be a good cop. He studied how to be a politician. Is that a crime? Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Breakfast with the Gordons. If you missed yesterday's episode, it doesn't mean a thing. The same dialogue will be repeated tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and... Now I'm going to be late. And Johnny gives Claire an affectionate peck on the cheek and he leaves to single-handedly defend our fair city against crime, corruption, indifference and... What else, Johnny? Sloth. Sloth. That's a good one. Go get him, Sherlock. Enjoy lunch, Johnny? Oh, new girl's a pretty good waitress, Pop. <laughs> I try to train him right. Well, be sure you train her to give me the check the next time I come in. Uh, look, Johnny... Look, I had the veal, salad, pie, and coffee. That's $2.90. Uh, Johnny, I wish you'd let me do something for you. I'd like to show my appreciation. You mean you'd like to ease your guilty conscience? Well, Johnny, I did my time. I paid my dues. No, Pop. You still owe society. What do I owe society? Information. Hmm? It's your duty to tell us everything you know about Mike Perry, and you know plenty. Sorry, Johnny. Why? You know he's the scum of the earth. He's worse. Then help me out. Give me a lead. I can't. Why can't you? I just can't see myself as a squealer. Uh, what is this code of the underworld nonsense? It's my code, Johnny. To me, the lowest animal in the world is a squealer. More important for you to live up to some imaginary code than it is for society to get rid of a, a menace like Mike Perry. Yeah. Yeah, it is more important. I gotta be able to live with myself. I can't squeal. It's not right, Pop. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's my way. <sighs> okay, Pop. Johnny, why, why do you drive yourself so hard? Hey, Pop. Wait, look through the window. Huh? That girl standing on the corner with a tall guy. Huh? Why does she look so familiar? Remember one of them hoods you arrested in the Worthington shakedown? Which one? The old-timer. Bully Decker. Oh, yeah. He goes... He goes back a long way with Mike Perry. Well, that girl is old Billy's young wife. Her name's Millie. She appears very friendly with a tall guy, huh? <laughs> That's how it goes, Jamie. All right. I'll see you around, Pop. Hey, Johnny, I, uh... I'm sorry I can't give you the kind of help you need. Well, maybe... Maybe you did give me just a little bit. You wanted to see me, Inspector? Yeah, Johnny, uh... How you're coming on the Mike Perry thing? Well... I'm short of manpower, Johnny. Oh, does that mean we're supposed to lay off? Now, wait a minute, Johnny. Is that the latest from upstairs? There are two endearing things about you, Johnny. A, you like to push people, and B, you don't know when to stop. Now, just understand one thing. 
Nobody tells me how to assign my men. Well, why say that to me, Tom? I know what you think of me. Why should you care what I think of you? <laughs> because you're the best detective in the department. Now, I'll give you the basic fact about Mike Perry, the bottom line. We are not going to get him. We're not, huh? In the end, it's going to be the Federals. They have the best angles, interstate violations, taxes, and so forth. It's basically their show. All of which is your way of telling me what? We'll always maintain surveillance, of course, but I don't need you for that. You say the feds have all the good angles, but I'm working on the best one of all. Murder. Johnny, that's 20 years old. You can't use that badge as a means of exercising your own personal... My own personal what? Vendetta. You and Mike Perry, kids from the same neighborhood. You went one way, he chose another. Well, that wouldn't have mattered, but you believe he killed the one man everyone loved, Father Jim. And you don't believe it? You don't believe he was robbing the church and Father Jim discovered him? Sometimes I think the reason you became a cop was because Mike became a crook. Law and order. <laughs> Who are you kidding? All you ever really wanted, all you still want, is to bag Mike Perry. Say, you didn't have to become a cop, Tommy. Well, you could have been a psychiatrist. You let Mike Perry run your life. He turned you into a crusader, a zealot. Well, what's wrong with crusaders and zealots? They're hard to live with. Because they become fanatics. And they get passed over at promotion time. Look, look, I know we have to pull in our horns on this Perry thing. But I may have a lead. Okay, stay with it a couple of days. Nice to see you, copper. What do you want? I brought you some cigarettes, Billy. Well, how are they treating you? What are you doing here? I was just checking, Billy. After all, I was a cop of college. I feel responsible for your welfare. You know what I mean? Look, I didn't open my mouth back then. And I ain't gonna open it up now. Oh, no, you got me all wrong, Billy. I just wanted to make sure they're treating you okay. Oh, first rate. We got maid service, a butler. Oh, I can't play golf today because of the rain. But this weekend, we got a cruise oh, great. point. Great, oh, great. Guard. Well, I gotta get back to that cold, cruel world out there. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Your wife looks great. Yeah? Yeah, I thought you might want to know. I understand she hasn't been around to visit lately. You're wasting your time. You won't get a rise out of me. I guess the reason is she must be busy. I keep running into her. She's always with that... that tall guy. Jerry! Yeah, Jerry, that's his name. You're lying. Jerry. He's young and he's good-looking and... he's there. She... <laughs> She wouldn't. That's the way it goes, Billy. You know what the French say. The one who's absent is the one who's wrong. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Come back here. Where are we going, Laura? Downtown. All the way downtown just for lunch? Oh, we're breaking bread at the Ambassador. The ambassador, Laura. <laughs> Laura, what? In the first place, I am not dressed for the oh, ambassador. Oh, Claire. Honey, you could punch three holes in a burlap bag, one for your head and two for your arms, and still make the ten best-dressed women's list. Still make? I never made it. Well, that's because your light's been kept hidden under a bushel. Look, let's not start that today. In the second place, I can't afford ambassador prices. Ah, but you don't have to pay for it. I'm not going to let you... Nor am I. Honey, we are guests. Really? Of the 100 committee. You know that high-class group made up of all the city's social and political and other large wheel leaders? And this is the biggest luncheon of the year. Don't you read the papers? The flower and chivalry of our fair city will be in attendance. How do we rate an invitation? Oh, well, the occasion? To celebrate the arrival of the Rembrandt collection from the Rijksmuseum in Holland. Really? But you still haven't explained... Well, you know how I love art. So I said to Tommy... Some wires and get me in there. <laughs> One word to Tommy and it's fireworks. So here we are. Oh well, that, that's wonderful. But but what? I don't think I better go. Why not? Uh oh, oh, I see. As far as Johnny's concerned, uh, Tommy's getting those tickets would be as if he took a bribe. That's how Johnny looks at it, Laura. Um, 
Oh, look, I, uh, I think it's only fair to tell you something else. Um, an old friend of yours will be there. An old, old friend. Who? Mike Perry. Mike? What would he be doing there? Well, he's a patron of the arts. He footed the bill for the exhibit. No, I can't go. But why not? The mayor will be there. So will the lieutenant governor. I don't think you know how it is in our house where Mike Perry is concerned. Uh, aren't you curious to see Mike after all these years? Not even a little bit curious? Okay, let's forget it. Here's a hamburger joint. We'll just pull in. Do you know... In the 20 years I've been married to Johnny, I never really went anywhere or met anyone or, or did anything. Why should I miss an event like this? And if Johnny objects, well, who says Johnny has to know? Who says Johnny has to know? Are we starting to practice to deceive? Well, if we are, you know what a tangled web we're about to weave. Let's see. Standard equipment for a web is one spider and one fly. Who catches whom will be revealed when I return shortly with Act Two. Some people see the moral issues of the day as all black or all white. Others perceive them in varying shades of gray. Does this mean that evil, like beauty, is determined by the eye of the beholder? Who knows? Are there, should there be, absolute standards? If so, who sets them? And who shall interpret them? difficult and perplexing questions which each of us is called upon to provide an answer for every day we live. What happens now? Well, now that lunch is just about over, we will all drift into the presidential gallery and uh, be treated to a premiere showing of the Rembrandt. Um, have you seen, uh, you know who? Uh, no, I guess he didn't show up. Which makes you feel what? Happy or disappointed? Relieved. Why? Because I wouldn't have the faintest idea of what to say to him. We would have absolutely nothing to talk about. Hello, Claire. Hello. Uh, it's... It's Mike. Mike. Perry. You embarrassed, Claire. I... I don't know what I am. I... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Laura Billingham, um, Mike Perry. How do you do? Oh, you must be Chief Inspector Billingham's wife. Mm -hmm. uh, the inspector's a close personal friend of mine. Is he? Well, no, not really. I was introduced to him once at a civic function. Oh, look, would you excuse me? There's someone standing near the door who I simply must say hello to. But, Laura, This I... won't take a minute. What are you doing here? All these years, I often wondered what we'd say to each other if ever we met again. You haven't answered my question. Many of these people are my friends. Friends? But you're... What? Racketeer. Actually, the boss of the rackets. Boss of the rackets? <laughs> Sounds like a title for a TV movie. But it's true. No, it isn't. That claim was made to a grand jury. The grand jury answered, no, not proved. Maybe not proved, but certainly true. Would you subject every accused person to such double jeopardy? Tell me, 20 years ago, why did you choose John Gordon instead of me? Mike, will you excuse me? Why? You're dying to talk with me, and you know it. Really? Oh, come on, Claire. You and me and Johnny Gordon, three kids in the same parish, three kids who grew up together, the three musketeers. But once we got to be 17, 18, 
We knew eventually there could only be two of us. You know, the smart money in the neighborhood was betting on me. Mike, you like to shock people. Let me throw you a curve. Did you murder Father Jim? Why do you ask? The answer is either yes or no. It isn't why do you ask. But why do you ask? It's important. Because everybody says you did. That's the good old everybody says syndrome. You know who started that rumor, don't you? Johnny. Why would Johnny start such a rumor? You believed it. That's all he wanted. The story is you were trying to rob the rectory when Father Jim surprised you. You slugged him? Yes, that's the story. But Goldilocks is also a story. So is Cinderella. Father Jim was delirious. Take the chalice. You don't have to kill for it. He kept repeating and repeating before he died. Does that make me guilty? Someone stole the gold cup. The beautiful gold cup we kids gave him for a present. Why me? It was the only valuable thing he owned in all the world. And you and I and Johnny are the only ones who knew where he kept it. Then you and I and Johnny should equally share the suspicion. You know who I just waved at? The lieutenant governor. He wants to see me. Then why don't you go to him? Oh, no, that's not the way it works. I don't go to him. He comes to me. He needs my money, my influence. A good thing he doesn't need modesty. That's one commodity you could never supply. A man works so he can brag to a woman. Why should all these important people want to curry favor with a racketeer? Racketeer. You teach history in high school. You know what it was like in this country in the 19th century. and How were most of those fortunes made? How do you know so much about history? I spent four years in jail. Unjustly, I suppose. Oh, no. No, I was guilty. But that was my university. I read and studied day and night. A pity you didn't learn anything. Oh, but I learned everything. Everything that counts. How to be successful. Kids have graduated with honors from Ivy League colleges not nearly as well prepared for life. Your type of life. <laughs> this is how we talk to each other in the old days. See how naturally we just fall back into it? How's your wife? I never married. The only girl I ever loved turned me down. But she was just a kid. Now she's mature. Maybe we can rectify that mistake. Don't bet on it. But I am. And I only bet on sure things. Hello, Sally. Well... Is this business a pleasure, Detective Gordon? How's the photography business coming, Sally? Uh, there's no such thing as a nightclub crowd anymore. These creeps ain't out to spend money. Could you use a customer? Point me at him. It's me. Why? You think you're so good looking you gotta have pictures taken? No, I'm the customer, not the subject. Oh. You see that couple sitting at the table along the far wall? Hmm? Oh, you mean the twosome that's doing that kind of quiet but serious neck? You got them. You see, that's what I mean. You wanna do that? Stay home. Don't come to a nightclub. Could you take a few pictures of those good people? Uh-huh. On the QT, naturally. Naturally. Why? Well, let's say I'm writing a book, and I want you to illustrate it for me. Any uh, particular kind of poses, Detective? Well, that clinch they're in now looks pretty good to me. How many times I gotta tell you I don't know nothing? But I know something. You're trying to tell me stories about Millie that don't go. She's crazy about me. You're taking a rap for Mike Perry, but it's okay with you. That's your job, to take the rap. You always knew that. However, in return for which, he's got an obligation to you. Money gets paid regularly to a certain bank account. What can you prove? Who cares? You want to sell years of your life for money? Go. But that's only half. He's also responsible for your family. What family? Your wife, little Millie. He's supposed to make sure she's taken care of. Now listen, copper. I've had enough of you. Does the law say you got a right to come into my he's cell He's supposed here? to make sure she isn't... Well, how can I put this? 
led into temptation. Shut up! That's the agreement. In return for which, you keep your mouth closed. Well, he broke that agreement. You're lying! He's written you off. Get out of here! They've all written you you're, off. You're, you're crazy! Millie would never do anything! One picture is worth a thousand words. Look. Get out of here! Afraid? Take a look, and then tell me she's nuts about you. Well, Billy, now what do you say? Leave me alone. Just leave me alone for a while. I understand. I'll call the guard. Uh, no, no, no. Don't go. I'm sorry, Billy. But I have to do my job any way I can. Uh, it ain't her fault. See, she's just a kid, but Mike should have done something to explain to her. He... He let me down. Are all bets off? Now I owe him nothing. You know enough to put Mike Perry right here in jail. I know enough to put him right in the electric chair. They still burn guys today. They do and they don't. It all depends. But it's got to be murder. How long does murder keep fresh? Forever. Even 20 years? Whose murder? He killed a priest. A priest? Father Jim Morgan, what have you got? What have you got? You got my word that your sentence will be cut. I made deals while you was in diapers. Now, we'll do it this way. My mouthpiece has to meet with a DA. And all the I's get dotted. And all the T's get crossed. How do I know you got anything? Only three guys know about some that could sit Mike Perry down in a chair. Mike, me, and Pop Morrison. You know, the guy who went straight and runs a restaurant. Well, what is it? I like you, copper. But first, my mouthpiece has to tell me we got a deal. Johnny? Yeah. Are you late? It's been a long day. Anything wrong? No, matter of fact, everything's great. Then why do you look so serious? <laughs> Did you ever wait and wait? Oh, years and years for something to happen. And then, all of a sudden, the end is in sight. The end of what? The end of Mike Perry. What do you mean? I think we're going to find the evidence that ties him to the murder of Father Jim. What do you mean, find the evidence? Just what I said, honey. Find the evidence. After all these years? Won't that be sort of convenient? I, I don't think I understand that. Well, some people might consider that you're so eager to put Mike Perry away that you conveniently found some 20-year-old evidence. Listen, if it's a chance to put Mike Perry away, I'll take any evidence I can get. Ah, how was your day? It was all right. How was your lunch with Laura Billingham? Anything exciting come up? What could be exciting about lunch with Laura Billingham? Remember the questions we used to put to children? Where did you go today? And the kid would say, out. And you'd ask, what did you do? And he'd answer, nothing. We have the same situation here. After all, she only had lunch with the man her husband is trying to arrest for murder. Well, there will be more lunches. Perhaps even a breakfast or two when I return shortly with Act Three. The problem is you can't see into the future. A girl is 19 or 20 years old. Two young men want her. She can only have one. So she chooses... She chooses the one she thinks she loves more. But for the rest of her life, a day hardly passes when she isn't confronted by the nagging little question, did I pick the right one? Claire chose Johnny Gordon because she was in love with Johnny. But she was also in love with Mike Perry. Want to look at the view? Come on. 
You can see into three states from here. Mike, suppose someone sees us. Ah, there isn't a soul in sight. But what if somebody saw me get into your car? No one saw you. You know, we sound like a couple of school kids sneaking off for a weekend. Oh, Mike, I don't know why I even agreed to go riding with you this afternoon. Sure you do. I must be crazy. You were. You were crazy to pick Johnny over me. Why does Johnny hate you so much? Johnny saw me as the only serious rival as far as you were concerned. You better take me home. Sure. We're not going to decide this in a day. Decide what? Our future. Our future? Yes, Claire. We have a future. No. What are you doing here? I... I don't know. You're bored with things at home. I'm not. What a fascinating, exciting life you lead. What do you know? Where do you go? Mike, take me home. Do it this way. You wanted both of us. Okay. You've had 20 years with Johnny. Now take 20 years with me. I want to go home. Johnny's a dead end. Life is change, movement, action. Mike... You must answer one question for me. Did you kill Father Jim? What kind of question is that? A question that has to be met head on and answered. Can you swear to me that you did not murder Father Jim? I swear to you, in God's name, I did not murder Father Jim. I was about to send for you, Johnny. There's been a murder down at the Merchandise Plaza. I, I simply have to take you off the Mike Perry thing, but you can go back to it afterwards. The Mike Perry thing, as you call it, is all over. What do you mean? I mean, we've got him. Got him for what? Homicide. I know you don't kid. Not about Mike Perry. How have we got him? Billy Decker. Been with Johnny all these years. Billy wants to sing. What kind of song? The story of how Mike killed Father Jim. You're sure? It depends on the deal. If he can give us a homicide rap on Mike Perry, we'll give him the keys to the city. The DA has to meet with his lawyer to work it out. To get the evidence on Mike Perry, the DA would be willing to walk barefoot in the snow. No, I don't know how you worked it, Johnny, but you've done a tremendous job. Yeah, I'm calling Spinelli's office. Congratulations. <laughs> Hello, Inspector Billingham. I must talk with the D.A. Huh? Well, break in on it. Nothing's more important than this. Uh, Johnny, you want to pick up my other phone? You're right. Hey, Nick. How are you? Chief Inspector Bullingham's office. You wouldn't guess what I got for you in a million years. Yeah? Yeah, I'm Detective Gordon. Who wants me? I really thought we'd see this What? Day. When? Yeah. We got it. Are you sure? Finally. I see. Yeah. Who? Let me tell you. Who. Yeah, okay. Hang up, Tommy. Well, hold it, Nick. What is it, Johnny? Hang up. Hang up. It was the warden. Billy Decker's dead. What do you mean, dead? Somehow somebody got to him. He was murdered last night. But I thought you said you had the evidence. I did, but it disappeared. How can evidence disappear? I mean, if it's real, solid evidence strong enough to get a conviction for homicide. How? Forget it. Johnny, you can't say that to me. I've been living with this for 20 years, too. What was the evidence? I said to forget it. Was there any evidence? Or... Or what? Or has this thing become an obsession with you? This con, this Billy Decker, was going to talk. You mean a convict was willing to manufacture evidence in return for his freedom? What do you mean, manufacture? Oh, forget it. Somehow, through the grapevine, Mike Perry must have heard about it. And reached in there to shut him up. Oh. Well, you can prove that, I suppose. It was the only way. But I'm not licked. I'll get him. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Johnny. I'm talking about you and Billy Decker and Mike Perry and Father Jim. So? So just before he died, or let's say before he was murdered, Billy said that you also knew... 
I want what you know, Pop. I'm not a squealer, you know that. I want that evidence. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry, too, because this is war. You may find that there are violations in this joint. You mean... You mean you'd close me up? Yeah, I'd close you up, and I'd be right. Because according to the law, no one of questionable background is permitted to run an eating and drinking place. Johnny, you know I'm straight. You can't have it both ways. You can't be a respectable member of society and live by the code of the underworld. You have to choose. <laughs> close me up. Oh, come on, Pop. We're both of us talking like kids. Sure, I'm emotional about Mike Perry, and you're the same way about some non-existent code. It exists for me. Well, let's talk like two guys who've been around. First off, if we get him for the murder of Father Jim, you're an accessory. You've had information which you've withheld. Well, I'll take whatever rap that is. But I don't think you'll live that long. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised you're still alive. Oh, come on, Johnny. What are you handing me? The only loose end in Mike Perry's career is the murder of Father Jim. But he always thought he was in the clear. For years, it hasn't even entered his mind. Okay. All of a sudden, he gets a tip from some stoolie in the jail. Billy Decker is going to talk. So he takes care of Billy. Now he has to think. Who else knows about it? If you were in Mike's shoes, what would you do, Pop? <sighs> Listen, Johnny. It's him or you, Pop. Uh, Everything else is idle chatter. Well, this goes back 20 years. Billy Decker and me, we, the two of us, owned the neighborhood action. There was a punk kid. He, he thought he was tough. He wanted to join up. And, and we kept telling him to go peddle his papers. So on this particular night... Hey, punk, how'd you get in here? I got something for you guys. All you can have for us is two words. Goodbye. Say him and beat it. I want to know if I can fence this. What do you got? This? Hey. Hey, that ain't bad. Pretty good looking cup. Solid gold. You hold it. What's written on it? To Father Jim with all our love. Father. That was the priest who got killed yesterday. I didn't even think he was in the house. I heard somebody coming. I hid behind the door. When he walked in, I... I hit him on the head. I didn't know it was the father. Oh, this... This is the hottest gold cup in town. Uh, listen, there's two things you don't do. You, you don't kill a cop. And you, you don't kill a priest. Listen, you stupid kid. Lose that cup. You're crazy. It's worth a couple of hundred bucks. It's worth your life. Bury it. Melt it down. Lose it. What happened to the cup? He never got rid of it. There's your evidence. What do you mean he never got rid of it? I, I don't know. For some years, he, he just couldn't. I saw it again when Billy and me had to go back to Mike's office to pick up some stuff. He's got a little antique mahogany cabinet. Inside, we seen the cup. Thanks, Pop. He's squeezed out of a lot of tight spots. Let's see him account for that cup. <laughs> I had to see you, Mike. Don't ask me why. But I will. Why? Because everything inside me keeps going around and around. I don't know where I am. I don't know what to do. What is it? I don't know that either. It's just... It's Father Jim. When I thought you had killed him, I suppose... I suppose it affected the entire course of my life. But I didn't kill him. Who... Who's that? Must be one of my boys. Mike, I don't want to be seen. Why don't you step into the bedroom? I'm coming. Johnny. Hello, Mike. Johnny, how long has it been? I have two pieces of paper here. One is a warrant for your arrest. My arrest? For what? Murder. Really? Let me tell you about your rights. I know them. Save your breath. I also have a search warrant. What are you looking for, Johnny? My books have just come back from the IRS. Clean. I'm not looking for your books. I told the other guys to stay outside. I've waited 20 years to do this, and it belongs to me. It's mine alone. 
Tell me about it. Why didn't you throw the cup away? Get rid of it. What cup? Hey, get away from that cabinet. I've got a warrant. And I've got a gun. You're crazy. Just don't reach for yours. Whatever you do, keep your hands up. I didn't come here alone. You can't get away with it. Neither can you. It's the end of the line, Mike. Look at how we wind up, Johnny. When we were eight years old, we swore to be brothers. We even took an oath in blood. Why don't you come along quietly, Mike? No. If it has to end for me, it has to end for both of us. Murder is a bargain. No matter how many you commit, you only pay for one. No, no. Don't reach. What was the first prayer Father Jim taught us? Let's hear it for the last time. Now I lay me down to sleep. Hey, what, what was that? Hey, let go of the gun, Mike. Let go. I'll kill you. Hey. Oh. I'm home. I heard it on the news. Then you know. I would have called you, but I didn't think it was the kind of thing you should hear on the phone. Is he dead? Oh, he'll recover and stand trial. What happened? I don't know. I went up there to make the arrest, and I was careless. For the first time in my life, he got the drop. He was going to kill me, but there must have been someone else in the place, because somebody threw a vase at him. What are you saying? Go figure. Well, who was it? Well, by the time I finished fighting with him and went to look... There was no one in the apartment. Whoever it was just got away. Well, it's over. No, Johnny, it isn't. Between you and me, it'll never be over. Who's talking about that? Johnny, do you ever think maybe you might have married someone else? Yeah, sometimes when you get to be a pain in the neck about something. Yeah, me too. But I never will again. I promise you, I never will again. Well, now that we've got Mike Perry, I feel as if a, a great weight had been lifted. So... A great weight had been lifted. So do I, Johnny. So do I. Obviously, Claire Gordon is a woman who doesn't think her husband should know everything. And before you venture to disagree... Consider that despite a few perfectly normal intervals of doubt, she does enjoy a happy marriage. I'll be back shortly. I posed a little problem at the beginning of our story. How is the child molded? What makes him the man? Two youngsters. Why does one become a ruthless killer and the other a dedicated cop? Our modern wise men study, analyze, experiment, but their answers leave us no wiser. On the other hand, the ancient wise men dismissed the problem by saying that all of us are playthings of the whimsical gods. Why isn't that as good an answer as any? Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Terry Keene, Robert Dryden, Leon Janney, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Well, you told me uh, Dan warned you not to come up here to the hut while he was away. Right? Right. Because he thought another murder, murder number three, could take place today? Right? Right? Well, could be Dan knows something we don't know. Could be another woman, another blonde, is going to be slashed to death today. <laughs> Me? You. Well, what have I got to worry about? I'm with you. Precisely. What? I said precisely. You're here alone, far from the inn... In a hut that's been the scene of two murders, each at this time of the year. And you're here because a man you scarcely know, me, dared you to come. 
This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.